Okay, here is our question. We are washing windows and we are on a platform that's suspended halfway up a skyscraper doing so. We want to work out the tension in, in the two cables that hold this up. So, let's draw a diagram. We have a platform, look at it from sideways on, and it's got a cable pulling it up at both ends. We know it has a mass of 70 kilos, so its weight, we're like down in the center, it's 70 g newtons force downwards. We know it's 4 meters wide, and we know we have two people standing on it. There's you, that's 1 meter, with a mass of 55 kilos. And your partner, who's a bit bigger, that's 1.3 meters with a mass of 87 kilos. Now let's draw a what's called an extended free body diagram here, which just shows the forces. Okay, this is an extended free body diagram. So all it shows is the object in question, which is our platform, and the forces acting on it. Not the forces it applies to other things, only the forces acting that pull the actual platform. So what do we have? We have the platform's own weight, um, which the weight of an object itself can be thought of as acting at the centre of mass, which is halfway down the platform in this case. There's a force from me and the force from my partner. And then there are the tension forces at the two ends and the two cables. You can think of the cable as being like a spring with a very strong spring constant. So it applies a force but doesn't stretch very much. And we've got a bunch of distances, like it's 2 metres there, 2 metres there, 1.5, um, 1 metre there. So what physical principle can we use now? Well, energy doesn't really come in here that I can think of. Nothing's moving. Because nothing is moving, it's a statics problem. For statics problems, normally you use two principles. So it's statics. You use the force, momentum principle. Forces must balance. Which means, in this case, all the forces are either upwards or downwards. So the upward forces must equal the downward forces. So forces upwards, which is T1 plus T2, equals downwards, which is F1 plus F2 plus W. Now we know F1, F2 and W, but we don't know either T1 or T2. This is not enough to solve it. Uh, we don't know how the force is distributed between T1 and T2. For that, we will need to use torques. For example, if T1 was very large and T2 is very small, so let's say we got rid of that, it was only being held up at that end, the whole thing is going to rotate. The side is going to rotate downwards and we're all going to fall off. So we need some balance of forces between T1 and T2 to stop the platform from rotating. How do we work that out? We use the torques. We need to pick a point and measure the torques about that point. We could measure the torques about any point, but for the moment I'm going to measure the torque about this end. So what torques do we have? Clockwise, so the torque, which must equal zero, otherwise it will be rotating. This is F1 times 1 meter plus the weight times 2 meters plus F3, my partner's weight, times, he was 1.3 meters in from this end, so that means it's 2.7 meters from that end, minus T2 times 4. Okay, so let's rearrange that equation. 
we get that 4 times the tension 2 is equal to these terms. And if we plug the numbers in, which I did on my calculator, you end up with 4213 newtons. So divide by 4, we get the tension in cable 2 of 1053 newtons. What then is the tension in cable 1? Remember that T1 plus T2 equals, that's the upward forces equal the downward forces. So that's F1 plus F2 plus W. So take T2 over this side of the equation. And once again, this is something I worked out earlier, equals 1024 newtons. There's our answer. Is this plausible? Well, because we've plugged numbers in, it's no longer possible to work out dimensions. We'd have to go back a bit earlier and do that. Um, but we can just look at the numbers and see if they make sense. A thousand newtons is um, the force you get from 100 kilograms, roughly. So 100 kilograms times g, which is about 10. So um, if we've got upward force of a thousand at both sides, that would fit for a total weight of about 200 kilograms. Which makes sense. We've got 70 kilograms plus 87 plus 55. That's about 200. So that all makes sense. Does it also make sense that these two things are so similar? Well, if we think back to our diagram, um, my, the partner weighs more than you do, so you'd expect more tension on their side, but the partner is also closer to the centre. So for that reason, you'd expect less tension on that side. So there are two reasons why they might be different, and they partially cancel out. So it kind of makes sense that these two things should be roughly equal. So all seems to work.